Hi everyone, welcome to the um, live Q&A session after our March event. Uh, my name is Nalini Saragopan, President of the Classical Arts Society of Houston. It gives me immense pleasure and welcome you by saying good morning and good evening who has joined us today in this captivating, historical, musical, and intellectually stimulating musical journey of Tyagaraja's Tiruvayaru in a storytelling format by Mr. Sriram, accompanied by Vidushi Amrita Murali. It gives me also great pleasure to invite you all to this live chat program on behalf of the board of the Classical Arts Society of Houston. I now invite Mrs. Prabha Bala, founder and past president of the Classical Arts Society of Houston, to felicitate our speaker today, Mr. V. Sriram. Prabha? Mr. V. Sriram, what a pleasure. First of all, I must thank you for accepting our invitation to do this talk for us, for the Classical Arts Society of Houston. Knowing how busy you are, especially during this part of the year, with uh, so many other uh, talks and your own work. So thank you first for accepting our uh, invitation. Then, you know, in the past uh, year almost, where most of us have been confined to our house, not moving more than five miles from our immediate neighborhoods, you have taken us 12,000 miles across and two and a half centuries into the past to give this wonderful heritage walk through Tiruvayaru. Now, who would have thought of using Tyagaraja's Kritis to do a walk? Only you. <laughs> because when they say research, most people do research. But when you do, you research. So even the most hackneyed subject, when you have researched it, will come out with new things for people to know, a new slant, a new look at everything. So this is what this talk has been. In one and a half hours, you have managed to pack so much. Uh, you have uh, given us an absolute vision of Tiruvayar, a grand village with its majestic uh, buildings on the shores of Kaveri. I almost felt Maliamaru them all around me. <laughs> Listen. It was uh, so uh, picturesque, so your word paintings were wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, um, your selection of songs and how you portray the songs. I mean, you have managed to present the variety in uh, Tyagaraja's compositions, variety in, in terms of the lyrical content, the words, and also the uh, compositions themselves. So I can go on and on. This is only a half an hour uh, event, and I can see Nalli looking a little anxious. So let me point thank you on behalf of the entire board of the Classical Arts Society. And thank I'm you. sure I'll be speaking for every viewer who was uh, with us this past hour and a half. Thank you very much. This has been an experience that we will cherish and recollect over and over again. Thank you, Sri. Thank you. Thank you, Prabha. And I must also add here that my task was made very easy by the fact that I had Amrita to One sing more. the questions. And, uh, uh, you know, she's an artist who brings a lot of uh, passion to her singing and is also very familiar with most of the Kritis of Tyagaraja. And so that uh, helped a lot in uh, putting it all together. Thank you very much. Truly, on behalf of Classical Arts Society, we are very, very... Uh, um, happy to the fact that you included uh, Amrita as your voice for Tyagaraja. She really was your voice for Tyagaraja. And her singing was just marvelous, very beautiful. Thank you again for uh, inviting Amrita to be your accompanying uh, artist. And now let me sit, turn back to Nalini to continue with the Q&A. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prabha, for that uh, very crisp but very thorough acknowledgement of the details of the presentation here. It now gives me pleasure to have two stellar folks on the panel with us, along with Mr. Sriram, uh, who have uh, graciously joined us today. Let me go ahead and introduce them. Um, Dr. Ratna Kumar, Houston's very own. Um, Ratna Auntie is how I call her and many of us call her. Uh, for those of you who don't know her, she's a Sangeet and Atak Academy awardee for her contributions to Kuchipudi dance. 
she's a beautiful graceful and loving person first and one of the most sought after Bharatanatyam and Kuchipudi gurus in the Houston and Texas area with a strong lineage in the performing arts. She's the founder director of the Anjali Center for Performing Arts and has trained hundreds of students over three decades or so. I, I must mention here that her mother, who I have had the fortune of meeting, um, Dr. Anusuya Vinjamuri, is a Telugu Sanskrit pundit and an author herself. Um, Ratna Aunty, as I would like to call her, is a polyglot who speaks Telugu, Tamil, Hindi, Malayalam, and Kannada, among others. It is very befitting, in my opinion, to have her on this panel today, where Tyagaraja and his Telugu compositions are the focus. So welcome, Ratna Aunty. Uh, and I kept it very short. I can go on and on about her as well. <laughs> uh, Dr. Aruna is our, uh, is our uh, guest here as well. And uh, she's grace, uh, graciously joined us from New Jersey. She's an ENT physician who's deeply interested in Carnatic music and South Indian performing arts. Um, she's a past president of Simana, which is Carnatic Music Association of North America based in New Jersey. And she's a friend of Mr. V. Sridham, and she has accompanied him on many tours with him. Um, and I must mention that I understand that she's toured Thiruvayaru with him. So very happy to have her with us today as well to join us on this chat. Um, the way we would structure this is that we'll have, uh, we'll invite our guests to have a brief dialogue with Ms. Sira, followed by uh, questions and answers from the audience here. So please go ahead and send in your questions to Mr. Sriram on the Facebook chat as we go through this program. And I'd be happy to bring them to him after we have our invited guests have the dialogue with him. So Ms. Um, Dr. Uh, Aruna or Ratna Aunty, either one of you, um, I welcome one of you to start the uh, dialogue with Mr. Sriram and what you thought about the program and Add your comments. Well, since I belong to the minority here, I'm the only Telugu speaking person. I would just <laughs> take it upon myself. Um, I was say telling Sri Ram earlier that I'm one of uh, his one of his groupies because uh, I never fail to attend his talks when I'm in Chennai, no matter what else is there. It, priority is because he has elevated a talk to an art. And this is, uh, and I come return from every talk, learning something new, something special. And it has happened time and time again. So Sridham, we are the beneficiaries of your insatiable curiosity, which has resulted in your Akshaya Patra of knowledge. Thank and you. We, uh, we keep being enlightened and certainly enlivened because I know how much of uh, humor you have brought into so many of your talks, making uh, them very pleasant and you know fun to listen to. You you are enjoying yourself as you're learning something, and that I think is the best kind of uh, presentation one can ask for. So today was no different, no different. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I interrupt here. I must say uh, how many years ago it was then when I got first introduced to you at Shruti Patabiraman's office and he used to say Ratna Papa Garu. And that is how he would always refer to you, you know, and I would wonder because I had never met you prior to that, but I was wondering why Ratna Papa and then suddenly when I met you, I realized, okay, so this is the dancer who he was referring to all along. And he would always say Ratna Papa Garu. And I'll never forget our first meeting in that Alapana building in <laughs> JJ Road. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, when you mentioned words like Lantara, this, uh -huh. <laughs> my grandfather and all of them used to use it. Okay. And uh, when we went to Pithapuram to his, you know, their home, they were actually using those Lantaras. And, you know, it brought back so many memories. That's that word. I, I had never noticed um, the word. I have heard the Kriti only once before. And I had never even paid attention to this word unless, until you brought it to our attention today. And I thought, wow. I mean, 
imagine and also shalua when, <laughs> when prabha was uh, felicitating you i thought she would do an imaginary shalua for you <laughs> <laughs> shalua is a, is a the word that we use all the time shawl and um these are observations you know i'm always piqued by how you pick up these things and i'm i remember when an, in an earlier talk when you spoke about the trinity and you were actually you were talking also about tyagaraja you mentioned how like any normal human being he was interested in some gossip and he wrote in his songs about you know mentioning about this uh, mother in law daughter in law <laughs> and all that what you have spoken okay <laughs> because neighbors created such a tremendous impact and um, and that uh, he was a great observer of uh, the society around him but i must say you know i mean you are a great observer too because i see how many minute details the things you. that we would have, that i i would have been blind to them deaf to them i would have not even realized um to what extent did you have gone to pick out these little um unseen unheard uh, nuances in all these in the songs in the words in um in um matters in his daily life in uh, society as it was during his time so many things that uh, we were hitherto unaware of and i think that's what has made this talk extremely interesting it has it has become uh, it has somehow made us understand tyagaraja and his compositions so much better because we now we know him as a person a little better because what you said is right all the movies uh, you know nagayas chitu nagayas and later you know sumya jurus versions uh, do depict his brother as a very very wicked person who through the and you know i didn't even know until you spoke about it that these things didn't exist and they are all the figments of uh, they people's imaginations you know they have built them to probably to that point uh, the image of i just that. we actually just read an article add. recently uh, that was written by shri ram ji about the same in terms yeah, of yeah i just wanted to add that uh, these points about this landaru shalu and kimkapu uh, they are not my own finds uh, the landaru and shalu actually find reference in william jackson's book tyagaraja life and lyrics that is the first place where i happened to read them and then i went back to the kriti and i think it required an a foreigner to tell us this ourselves and uh, t s parthasarthi the great scholar was a very close friend of mine in the final years of his life and uh, he of course had be had worked very closely with jackson and jackson wrote uh, in fact he was one of the principal resources for uh, jackson for his tyagaraja both his books on tyagaraja so it was tees parsarthi who told me ur part la kim ka pongra vaarta use panirkar and i said okay forgot about it and then uh, you know tsp and i we would meet often we would speak on the four more more often and then he passed away i never found out from which composition this kim ka po uh, reference was and you know it got stuck in my head and i then had to read much of the many of the songs of tyagaraja <laughs> never found them anywhere but and i thought okay this old man must have forgotten he had obviously his memory had played tricks with him then i picked up prashad bhakti vijayamu to read the vachanas mainly to get this in- introduction about namdev tukaram sahadeva and purun and all that there i found kim kapu and i was just stunned because it is not in a composition it is in a vachana and it says that this stage which has been filled with spread with kim kapu so then that is when i realized that the word kim kob which is very often used in east india company history to speak of silk tyagaraja has referred to the same thing in his composition and he has used the same word over there and apparently it's a word of chinese origin which i didn't know where china where english east india company where tyagaraja it's all just too much to stomach sometimes <laughs> it, it is a small world and i you know i do also want to say that uh, you know being a telugu and i though born and raised in tamil nadu i you know for me um, the telugu language is uh, is very special it's my mother tongue 
So I have to say that uh, both yours and Amrita's ucharana of Telugu is impeccable. I mean, it, Thank it you. brings out Coming from you, that's a compliment. No, really, truly, I was so thrilled to hear Tyagaraja Kriti is being sung the way they are meant to be sung. Because so often I have heard mispronunciations. And yes, of course. So it has hurt me. <laughs> I never say anything, but I keep thinking, I wish I wouldn't do that to another language. Why can't they just say the words properly? But today, I, I enjoyed every word, Telugu word, both you and Amrita were saying, because it was so sweet to my ears. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Ratna Aunty. Thank you so much this is um, for that very interesting dialogue, which brought out more information out of Mr. Sriram here. Yeah, so um, I really enjoyed the exchange. I'm sure most of you did. Um, I was trying to add in between that we also uh, read an article by Mr. Sriram about the pictures taken or the movies that were taken. Movies made. Tyagaraja. Mm. Um, and... And then Ratna Aunty always says about how the pronunciation is very important when uh, any language. Or any language. Yeah. Any language. Any language. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so thank you for that. Now I would like to invite Dr. Aruna to share her views and her experiences mm -hmm. of having gone on these tours with Mr. Sri Ram and maybe perhaps about the Ravaya tour itself. It was. The lecture was beautiful, starting with the river Kaveri and then taking a journey towards his final Samadhi. That was very emotional. I'm only going back to a couple of centuries. And it brings back very pleasant memories of several trips I've taken with Sri Ram and many other friends. We were the fortunate ones. We had been to Tanjavur district, Tiruvayaru, then we have been to Madurai, various other places. There are two things which are coming to my mind now. One was a trip to Madurai, where Sri Ram had taken us to the Saurashtra Association, where we had Valajapet, Venkatramana Braghavadas, Thambura, and his father Raksha. And St. Tyagaraja's Tampura and the Padaraksha there. The Saurashtra Association maintains it. And when we looked at it, again, that was so emotional. <clears throat> and the amount of uh, devotion the Saurashtras have towards Tyagaraja's music is obviously uh, a trickle from the Valajabad tradition. The other thing I was uh, thinking about too, Tyagaraja, for him, Sri Rama was everything. Probably for him, Sri Rama was Vishnu. Like Jayadeva, Krishna was Vishnu. And so he even took out the Krishna Vatara from his Vedan Udharate and put in Karunya Matanvate as a Buddha, as a, uh, one of the avatars. Originally, when we used to say Rama, Ramascha, Ramascha, Krishnascha, Kalki. But Jayadeva took it to another level. Paulastyam Jayate, Halam Kalayate, Karunya Matanvate, Blechan Murchayate, and things like that. And what I'm saying is the interpretation of Vishnu and the Almighty with Rama and Krishna was so unique. And for them, they compass the whole world. And then the other thing which was always, which used to strike me from childhood was the song Gata Moha Shruta Pala Bhuta Shrita Ramana. Then when you look at it, you have another song from Dichitar. He was also inspired by probably the same tune. Guru Murte Bahu Kirte Surasena Adipate. Those two songs were identical, whether there was somebody else who had a sampradaya, they picked it up from the British tunes, or whether these people heard it, I thought at least Dichitar had gone to the north and he picked it up. Obviously, it was there, right there in Sarboji's environment. So those are probably the reasons why each was inspired, whether by each other or by a song 
which was already existing or from slight modification of band music, whatever it is, it was very nice. And I think music adapts itself, grows itself by influence from everywhere and the interpretation from the composers and musicians and ultimately our discerning pleasure. So with all that, and thanks Sri Ram for bringing out Thank you, Arun. small thing and we enjoyed it thoroughly. Yes. You'll never fail us. I'm a Thank groupie you. too. And uh, <laughs> apart from Medras going to Lucknow to Tiruvannamalai, I mean, name it. <laughs> JJ and I have, but JJ is my husband. He and I had thought about it. Now with COVID almost gone, now we are all trying to be protecting ourselves. Anytime there is a trip and we are almost retired, we are going to make a trip to India and join you for anything else that you may take us in future. Thanks. Sure. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Now Thank I you. have that facility to join you. Sri Ram on his trips. <laughs> Earlier, I had some other responsibilities I couldn't. Thank you, Sri Dr. Aruna, for your comments. Um, they were even more insightful and added more color. Um, so thank you again for joining us and taking the time. And you are actually forming potential groupies here. I'm sure there's many of us listening here and very inspired by your comments here between Dr. Aruna and Prabha. Um, and also we've watched, I've watched some of your YouTube videos. So very inspiring. Um, Thank you. To say the least. Non-music so, topics as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. no, I actually have to say this. I teach. On uh, economics, finance. Yeah, yeah. So I teach the Vedic Heritage School here in Houston for the younger kids. And uh, we learn about temple architecture. In fact, yeah. I found one of your videos about the Thirumayam temple. Uh, tour yeah. and I shared it with them because it really talks about the intricacies of the Gopuram and things like that. So there's a lot more out of your lectures that we are Thank looking you. to learn. Um, we have a few questions here. Yeah, yeah. So Sri I, Ram, I have one question move before over to we Prabhat. go to the and my, mine is uh, simple. I want to know if that uh, Saptastanu festival is still current. Do they still? Oh, very much. It is very much an ongoing festival. Uh, it happens in the month, month between April and May. The oh. only thing you should be prepared for is that it gets very hot. At and you're time. walking it's on the Kaveri yeah, right uh, bed. It is very crowded <laughs> as well. So mm. maybe we should wait for a year, you know, when things uh, get a little more clearer as far as this, in, you know, this pandemic is concerned. Then we should probably attempt going there during that time to see. And it. is that glass pavilion still there? Very much. That is the one that they use. They uh, oh. they keep renovating it. So in the sense that the, while the wooden structure is the same, they keep uh, changing the glass. The only uh, aspect that I think uh, you know is a little sad is that the quality of music has definitely uh, changed from the time of uh, Tyagaraja. Mm -hmm. But the fervor is all intact. Uh, people still come in large numbers to view the Saptaspanam festival. Uh, it is it is really nice to uh, go and see it. Let me also very quickly make one, add one comment for you. I mean, you have been the true historian and you have uh, given us a more authentic biography of uh, Tyagaraja. And you have pointed out that there needs to be evidence before you can uh, come up with a, uh, a biography. I mean, that I part of the, the academic part of uh, of uh, delineating anybody's biography. So thank you for that. Yep. Thank you, Prabha. I'd like, uh, Sri Ramji, you said there are a couple of questions that I would like to go ahead and read for you to respond to. Uh, one is um, from Mr. Hari Krishna, Harish Krishna. With regard to the portrait, are there portraits of Tyagaraja made during his own lifetime? Shama Shastri seems to have been painted by his contemporary. You could answer that, please. Yes, uh, Tyagaraja was definitely, uh, you know, a subject of, uh, if not two, certainly uh, one portrait even during his lifetime. The portrait itself is in Valajapet, which is near Kanchipuram. Uh, there is a Bhajana Mandiram there, which is maintained by descendants of uh, 
Valaja Pet, Venkatramana Bhagavata, one of Tyagaraja's senior most disciples, as Aruna mentioned, they were all members of the Saurashtra community. And which accounts for the fact that the Tambura and the Paduka and the manuscripts of Tyagaraja eventually found their place in Madurai in the Saurashtra Sabha. But this Bhajana Mandiram is in Balaja Pet and the portrait is kept there. Uh, the last picture that I showed in my slide presentation, which was a black and white reproduction, that is the, uh, the color version of that is the one that is there in, uh, in uh, Balaja Pet. Wow. And therefore, that uh, must have definitely been done. It is said by his descendants, of course, that it was done even during Tyagaraja's lifetime. And there is no reason to uh, doubt them. As I said, uh, you know, he was quite a celebrity in his time and he acknowledges it himself. Chama Shastri, of course, the family still keeps the portrait and they vouch for the fact that it was done a few days before his passing. And only his face had been completed and he passed away. And then the artist completed the rest of the picture after he passed on. Dikshitar is the man of whom we have no um, clear image of how he looked, what was he like, and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, S. Rajam then kind of created out of his own imagination uh, a Dikshitar. I would just like to add that there is Lakshmi Srivats who has asked a question yep. as to, uh, to you know, whether S. Rajam is really uh, the brother of Veena Balachandar and then she said any special reason to specifically choose these illustrations. Well, uh, one thing is Rajam is certainly the brother of Veena Balachandar and uh, he, was, uh, he was a very great uh, musician, artist, musicologist. Uh, he was a multifaceted personality. Uh, he was the first Carnatic artist to act in a film uh, in 1933 in Sita Kalyanam. Several things. Above all, an outstanding human being, a wonderful person whom I had the honor of knowing between 1999 and till his passing in... Uh, uh, when did he die? I think he died in 2012 or something like that. So uh, around eight years ago. So around 13, 14 years, uh, you know, I, I, I have spent hours at his feet learning several things from him. And what drew me to him was... Uh, Ironically, what made me first meet Ratna Papa as well was this meeting, was the Shruti magazine. In Shruti magazine, they used to carry sketches done by S. Rajan of the themes of Tyagaraja's composition. So I must have been in uh, the final year in school at that time, 82 or 83, when Shruti first started coming out. And I was living in Calcutta. And I remember the Sri Ganapatini Sevim Parare etc., you know, being reduced to this wonderful miniature painting with two lines of the Sahityam given below and the central theme of the composition. And uh, at that time, I would think, oh, this S. Rajam, someday I must meet him, etc., etc. And that dream came true in 1999 when I was taken by my friend Aarti Chari and introduced to Rajam. Thereafter, we became the closest of friends. And I took the liberty of giving him a few Tyagaraja compositions and saying, sir, either konja ninga panungo, either panungo. By then, he had given up doing watercolor, so he used to do black and white sketches. And uh, these were all done specifically at my request. And wow. that is how I acquired those pictures from him. And oh, the hours that we have, uh, it makes me very emotional just to even think of those uh, days with him. And, uh, you know, you all talk about these heritage walks. He was the father of the heritage walk. One day I told him I have committed to a few friends that I'll do a heritage walk in Mailapur. He took me around the streets. He was already well into his 80s. It was pouring with rain. He took me around the streets and pointed out the houses of Musri Subramaniya, Yer Madhramaniya, Yer Hari Keshnalur, Mutaya Bhagavatar, all that. That is how I started doing these heritage walks. And he was an outstanding person. So I like to bring his portraits in at very short notice in whatever I do. Somehow it brings that memory alive. Great, great. Thanks so much for that explanation there. And I think there were other people on the chat that were asking about the illustrations as well so thank you for explaining and Wala Japet is uh, like less than five kilometers from my hometown so it's very intriguing to know that there is a Which is your hometown? Rani Pet. Rani Pet, okay. <laughs> so but uh, it's great to know so the next time I go I'm going to make sure to go visit that. You must go. Uh, <laughs> and, it's, and, it's a great experience yeah. going there yeah. and seeing it. Yeah thank you so much. Um, there's another question, if I can ask that, also from Lakshmi. Um, 
Are there any influences of Marathi abangs in Tyagaraja's compositions? As you said, he must have listened to them almost every day. There is, uh, I am not aware, apart from this introduction uh, in Prahlada Bhakti Vijayam, where he specifically mentions these people, there are no other direct references. But Professor Sambamurti has said that the Raga Nalina Kanti, uh, in which Tyagaraja was the first to compose Manavyala Kinchara, so that composition, he says that Raga was actually taken by Tyagaraja from a Marathi theater song. So he says that Marathi Natya Sangeet kind mm. of an enactment must have happened in Tirvayaru or the surrounding area. And Tyagaraja was so influenced by that tune that he then took it and made it into a full-fledged Raga and he composed a comp he created a composition in it. So that again is a very in interesting uh, uh, extrapolation from Marathi influence and bringing it into Carnatic music. The other is the frequent use of this Chapu Tala, which is, you know, the, this is Mishra Chapu, and then you have Khanda Chapu, that is Khanda Chapu. Now these, they don't appear to have existed in our music to a great extent before the arrival of the Marathi Kirtankars. And so, you know, they were using the chipla, the castanet, in their hands when they were doing the kirtan. So, this half beat and one and a half beat, this arayadam, mukaladam, then this ushitalam, where vishamam, that is, you don't land on the samam at all and you keep uh, moving a little Visham. away from. Yeah, vishamamana tala, anala, vishamam, vishamam, and then ushi, etc., etc. Now, this was very much uh, a Marathi tradition. So Thyagaraja makes full use of it. In several of his compositions, you feel this Atita Edip, Anahata Edip, etc., etc. So you, you find that he was one person who really experimented with the entire gamut of these uh, uh, Tala structures. And therefore, a, he certainly was aware of it. It's amazing that somebody in the, you know, in the 18th century was so open-minded that he <laughs> allowed these, uh, you know, including Western music, that he allowed himself to take the best from everything that he felt yeah. would enhance his own composition, his own music. And, you know, I, I'm, it's, it's quite amazing because you would have expected someone steeped in, you know, traditions to have been, uh, have a, a narrower view of these things and maybe listen to them, but not really accept them or, uh, you know, incorporate them into the, his own compositions. And that's an, an amazing, amazing trait, even with Dikshita, right? To, to think uh, Western music is so diametrically opposite and that they <laughs> were so broad-minded that they could use all those notes and make uh, beautiful music in, you know, in their own way. And I think that is one of, I guess it's a very great quality. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you for again explaining and answering that question. Um, I think we are already over time here. So I would like to wrap the session here and thank Mr. Sriram uh, again thank you. for working with us on making this production possible along with uh, Vidushi Amrita Murali. This is really thank one you. of a kind and uh, we really look forward to more such sessions and programs with you. And thank you, Ratna, Aunty, and oh, Dr. Alina for taking your time to be with us. Our pleasure. Uh, yep. I want to let the Rasikas know there are more programs coming up from us. Um, in April, on April 17th, we have a Tamir Sai Thoranam program. That is, uh, you know, because Tamir New Year is around that time, so we will be presenting a Tamir Sai Thoranam program uh, presented by two stellar musicians. We'll keep the suspense a little bit longer and share the details with you in a couple of weeks. And also in May, we will have uh, the play uh, Trinity, which we we're supposed to uh, feature last year. But because of COVID, uh, we are proud to be featuring here this year in May. So look out for those programs. Please like our page and also, um, you know, browse our website to learn more about us. So there's more coming. Stay tuned and support our cause and our organization. Thank you again, everyone, and have a blessed weekend. Thanks. Great Thank beginning you. to the day. Thank you so much, Sriram. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Good to see you, Aruna. Good to see you, Ratna. Yes. Hi, Good to see all of you. And thank you again, Sriram. It's been a wonderful you. Bye.